morning. Can you hear me? Good. How are you? So we are about 50% down the list, so feel free to stand up if you need to. My watch is telling us that we have to. So my name is Paula Gomez. I'm a senior research engineer with GTRI uh, at the Cypher Lab, which is the um, cybersecurity, um, information protection, and har hardware um, I always forget, evaluation uh, research lab. So how many of you are familiar with GTRI? Everyone? Great. Yeah, sometimes, you know, it's, GTRI is not uh, great known around. Um, so our unit is a, a new unit within the Cypher Lab, which is a resilient infrastructure and supply chain. And my background is in architecture. I did my PhD here at Georgia Tech in computational design. So basically meaning uh, embedding every type of information into a building model, okay? And we are trying to push that boundary towards including other type of information, including knowledge, expert knowledge, and different type of models inside the concept of building information models, including um, human behavior, which is my area of expertise. Um, understanding how all this information can get together and analyze you know, different scenarios in a timeline. Um, the presentation today is about sustainable and resilient buildings. For sustainability, we are all very familiar and I'm super impressed with all the talks, all the presentations you have done starting from Monday. So thank you for the invitation, by the way. Um, however, um, I'm the platform we are proposing here from, from GTRI is uh, integrating all this knowledge that we see into one model towards one specific goal. And I'm inviting you to think of the human, again, as the center of this equation, right? Because sometimes we focus too much on how much energy are we consuming, water, right? And the building, make it more efficient, all of that, which is great. Don't get me wrong, but we need to rethink who is this for? And this is for us, right? How are we healthy? How are we happy in these buildings? Are policies actually supporting this? So the system we, we are working on, and I can talk about a few projects now, um, integrates everything from the human scale, develop, development of some uh, appliances like the Generation 2 Reinvented Toilet, for example, we were part of that group for two years doing the modeling, um, system modeling approach towards all the way to policies, how policies are actually supporting all of these initiatives, right? So, so a few examples. We have um, a project right now which is um, trying to measure um, ESG scores for buildings, for real estate specifically. So all this information we know from the ar architecture, engineering, all of that, how do we measure that, convert it into a score that is actually has some financial background, right? So those include also the social and governance aspects of the sustainability, right? Um, similar to what everyone presented here before, um, how cities are designed, how do we integrate them? How do we think of it as a system, right? Um, another, another project we, we are pursuing right now is, um, I call it cyber physical architecture. So basically, how do we think of in the future about these smart buildings, the vulnerability of these systems, right? We are all worried about the data and the information being leaked. How about the buildings? How vulnerable are they for either like physical attacks, but also climate, we know, but also like cyber attacks, key buildings like all hospitals or airports, right? Um, some specific projects that I'm leading uh, are related to health inside buildings, um, really calculating the risk of getting some disease, for example, COVID, <laughs> right? Um, like being prepared for the next pandemic including uh, different types of models, including building layout to start with, right? But also the, the program, the organization, the schedule they use, how people walk in and out, what is the occupancy rates for workplaces, right? Um, 
how do we, do we design these hybrid spaces so people feel comfortable in them, but also safe and healthy in the sense that, you know, we are here the whole day with no sunlight. That is not great for our happiness, right? We do need some sunlight. So how do we model all this information, measure the design of the buildings, optimize all these variables to really understand what's best for us at the end? Kind of selfish? I don't think so. Um, so another aspect to think about, I don't know how long do I have, but um, is to think of the future and actually utilize all these prediction tools we have right now to um, kind of like push forward the boundary to calculate the models we currently use. We know, for example, for building energy models, which are like very well known and very well developed, we are using the weather data of, of today, right? Which doesn't really make sense if you think about it because these buildings are going to be there for the next 50 years, if not more, right? Um, so why are we using the weather data of probably last year or five, five years ago in these models that, since we already know that you know, the weather in probably Vancouver would be similar to Atlanta in 50 years from now. So all those aspects, we need to start thinking of the timeline, considering the change. We know there's climate change. Let, let's input those variables into our current models to think about this. One minute, okay. So the last thing I want to invite you to think is uh, sustainability next, which is the keyword here, but what is it? And I think it's regeneration. Let's not just, you know, average down to zero. Let's try to do more so we can actually regenerate what we already did. All right. So again, I'm from GTRI, the risk unit, resilient infrastructure and supply chain. Uh, please feel free to contact us if you're interested to embedding your models into our integrated platform. Thank you.